okay? How's everyone doing today? I hope well. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna tackle a topic. I think that um, we often deal with from time to time, and and a lot of people deal with it. I know I have um, very much in my life, and that's doubt. Dealing with doubt. You know, how do we deal with it? What do we do with it? What does God think of it when we doubt? And you know, it's it's an important it's an important topic that we deal with, and you know. We get things in our life and things happen. We just don't know how it, how it's going to repair itself. And, and so oftentimes we get in this, well, how in the world? Because we can't fathom how it will be fixed. We oftentimes just doubt. And like, what do we do? But we, we forget who we serve. We serve a mighty God who's capable of all things. And so we're going to talk about today dealing with doubt. We're going to be in the book of Mark for one verse. But we're going to look at Judges. We're going to look at Gideon for a uh, uh, for a couple of verses here, just kind of see what this looks like. What 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 is doubt? So before we begin, let's uh, let's go to Lord in prayer, and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you for today. Thank you for another day to just go about proclaiming who you are and your word to those around us. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us daily. I thank you for my friends who have tuned in, and God, whatever ailments or issues in their life, I pray that. You know, this this topic of doubt, I pray that, th that they take something from it. I take something from it, God, to remember who we serve, a mighty God who is capable of all things. God, you are just absolutely f strengthened and powerful. And just to remember that God made this because we don't understand it. We don't know what's happening. doesn't mean you don't know what's happening. And that is just to remain faithful in who you are and who we serve. Father God, we pray for wisdom, we pray for understanding, we pray for discernment. Holy Spirit, we pray for awakening in our hearts and minds as we go through this to be softened, to receive your word with all that we have. God, we just thank you and love you. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, doubt. What is doubt, right? Well, there's kind of a couple of different ways we can look at this. We're going to look at the worldview and then we're going to look at the the, the the biblical view, right? So how does the world define doubt? Well, basically, it's a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. That's kind of how the world would view doubt. Well, how does the Bible, since we're dealing with the Bible, and that's what we go off of daily, how does it, how does it deal with doubt, right? Well, the Bible looks at it as a call into question the truth. Well, the Bible, we know, is the truth. And if God, if the Bible tells us God's going to do something, then he's going to do it. But if we don't believe that, we call into question, we're calling into question the truth, right? It's not necessarily a feeling of certainty or lack of conviction. We're calling into question the very truth, the very words God speaks. So, how do, how do we know if there's, how do we acknowledge what doubt is in our lives? right? What are some of the things that we often doubt about from time to time? You know, and so there's big things. I know there's people who doubt their salvation and we know the enemy comes in and he tries to mess with our minds, right? So what are some things, you know, man, I doubt I'm going to get this done today. I doubt this is going to happen over here. I doubt that's going to, right? Those are, but what we're talking about is when we doubt God's hand in our life, when we're in a situation and we're knee deep in it, do, how do we, how do we handle it? Do we, oh man, I don't think God's going to be able to do this. Or, man, it's just not going to get fixed. Or man, I'm in too deep. Man, I don't know what, we don't give God the, the, the credibility to who he is, right? We, we question the truth of, of him, question the truth of who he is. Well, we know. And I'm going to give you an example. So let's well, let's dig into Gideon today. We're going to look at Gideon. We're going to be in Judges chapter 6. We're just going to jump through it, okay? Real quick. Just a quick synopsis of Gideon. Gideon was this guy that God chose to save the Israelites, right, from these raiders and, and these people that were attacking and they were stealing their food. And, I mean, these guys would come and steal the food. It's the point Israel were hiding in mountains. It was so bad. And so they cried out to God, and God raises up Gideon. Now, Gideon is the least of his, now, and it's important to know this, because Gideon was the least of his tribe and the least of his family. He was the guy you would least, I mean, least expect God used for anything. You know, he was no Samson, right? He was no, he was no David. He was no Solomon. He was this guy that was little over here that you did not expect 
to be used. But God says, you know what? I use the least of everything. Right there is a faith power based statement right there, right? So let's read. We're just going to read verses 6, chapter 6, verse 17 of Judges. It says, Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that if I, if, if it is I really, you talking to me, please don't go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. So first off, here's Gideon going, if I found favor in your eyes, give me a sign. He's already doubting if this is God talking to him. Okay. Then we're going to jump over to uh, 36 through 40 in the same chapter. Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the, on the threshing floor. If there's dew on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand as you said. And that, it, and that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung off the dew and a, onto a bowl full of water. Then Gideon, now here we go. God said he's going to do it. He did it. Here we go. Gideon said to God, don't be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. All, allow me one more test with the fleece. This time, take the fleece, right? Take the fleece, dry, dry on the ground, cover it with dew. That night God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. So you didn't get it the first time. You already saw this. You needed these signs. God gives you a sign. You have to see it the second time. So sometimes what happens is we get in these situations, right, that we need to, we constantly have to see God working. And sometimes God works behind the scenes and we don't understand that. God was already preparing this, vet, this victory for, for Gideon and for the Israelites. He already knew exactly what was going to happen. Well, Gideon's question, well, is it me? Well, hold on. Let, do these couple little things for me. Do this over here for me. So Gideon has this doubt of, of is, is it me? Well, if you really did pick me, if you really are going to save us, do this and do that and do this and do that. Now, sometimes we don't necessarily have that type of, of experience in our life. But if you stop and think about how many times God has pulled you out of the fire or was in the fire with you. And then you over here in this time, you go, man, that's just no way. I don't know how. Folks, I'm telling you. You call into the question the truth of God. You call into question who God is. And I do it. It's hard. We all deal with it, right? Even John the Baptist. Jesus said if anybody was ever to get to heaven on their own terms, it would have been John the Baptist. Even John the Baptist doubted, right? Even he had doubts in prison. Listen, doubt happens from time to time. We must remember it's about belief, right? If we doubt then we are not believing as we should. We have to say, you know what? I'm doubting, but you know, sometimes it's just a matter of saying, God, I'm doubting. I don't want to doubt. I know you're good. I want to come. I just I just want you to take this from me. I want to read you Mark chapter 9, verse 23. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. So in, you're in this situation and you're in this if you believe God's going to save you, he's going to save you. It even says that God gives wisdom to those who believe. God is about belief in him. It's about trust in him. It's about obedience in him. Believe who God is. God doesn't give you this entire book for it just to be flim flammy. He gives you this entire book and you see it over and over and over again. Those who have put their trust in them, in God. Yes, do they have trouble in their life? Absolutely. I mean, Abraham, he had trouble in his life all, all over again. David, I mean, his own children tried to kill him to take his kingdom. But every single time, the entire, most of the book of Psalms is about him and his trust in God and what God did. He, 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 doubt, he never doubted who God was, right? He put his trust in him. So listen, guys, it, do you doubt? Sure. Are you supposed to? No. But just think, when you, when you start doubting about something in your life, stop, think about, God's, God's trustworthy. I'm calling you to question the truth of Almighty God. Hit your knees. End it in prayer. Right? God, I don't want I, I, I'm sinning. I don't feel good about this. How do I get away from this? Guys, again, thank you for tuning in. I hope this was a blessing to you. Um, as up here at Refuge, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your support. You guys are awesome. 
We will see you guys for the next one.